Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 206. Mike Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get geeky, talk tech, and have some fun here. With me on the line back again is Cynthia Klosky at Cynthia Klosky on the Twitters. How are you doing this week? I'm groovy. <laughs> awesome. Also joining with us is the other Dutters. Hi, <laughs> Kay Dutters joins us. I, I, I almost, I almost left on your brother's uh, uh, name on the titles. Unfortunately, we we look a little different, so it would have been okay. I hope at least. Yeah, yeah, slightly, slightly. <laughs> uh, of course, this is the awesome cast where we talk tech uh, and uh, geek out a little bit here, representing Pittsburgh for the most part. And of course, uh, you can check us out here live every Tuesday at six thirty p.m. at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at awesomecast or awesomecast on Facebook and Google Plus. Uh, you can check us on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Uh, and, of course, you can drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And, hey, we got a Patreon now. If you're digging the show, if you want to be my boss uh, and uh, want to contribute to that, uh, we're going to have some extras. And we're we're trying to push for maybe a spinoff show, maybe do some interviews, maybe some more of an extended nature of you know like what, what we've been featuring here from Alpha Lab Gear on the show the last few weeks. Uh, so uh, if we hit our goals, we'll, we'll spin that out just like we did with the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, how we have an interview uh, show going on there as well. Uh, so go check that out. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. And we really appreciate if you find value in the show and the conversations or drop it in the chat room every week. We'd really appreciate it. So let's get started with our awesome things of the week. Who wants to go first? Dutters? I'll go. Sure. Oh. My awesome thing of the week is a hotel. Oh. Actually, it's the, well, it's actually a mall. It's the mall. It's the mall of the world in Dubai. And what it is essentially is um, it's it's so hot there that you, you can't really spend a lot of time outside. So what they've done is to bring it indoors. And what this is is a massive complex. We're like talking 20,000 hotel rooms, 50,000 parking spaces, over four and a half miles of just streets and ceilings and places to walk around and, and stores, of course. But I just thought this was absolutely insane. Wow. Is this an artist rendering I'm seeing here? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's all planned out. It's It's. It looks like a city. It reminds me a lot of a cruise ship where you'll see everything involved with a cruise ship. And um, there's also going to be an indoor um, amusement park and a wellness district where you can go visit doctors. Oh, wow. <laughs> in case you get sick on your trip. But it's, it's pretty amazing. That's amazing. Isn't Dubai, isn't that where um, they have the tallest uh, the tallest uh, 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 building? The one that you saw Tom Cruise hanging off of in the last Mission Impossible? Oh, lost your audio. Oh, there you are. You're back. Better? You're back. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's the same city, so it's it, they're pretty on the cutting edge as far as uh, building construction goes, at least. Awesome, awesome. Really neat. There's a video over that uh, on Engadget. It looks like cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Well, what about you, Cindy? What do you have? I have uh, been scheduling things like crazy lately, and so my awesome thing, um, in a very sort of much smaller way, maybe if you are planning a trip, <laughs> with a bunch yeah. of, no, but um, uh, for scheduling things, I've been using Calendly.com. I used to use Doodle, and I know a lot of people use Doodle, mm -hmm. but Calendly lets me just hand over my appointment calendar for certain days and certain types of sort of types of appointments and um, time before and time after. Um, and it's free and it links up to my Google calendar where I keep track of what I'm currently doing. So, um, uh, so I don't, so someone can't schedule a, a time when I'm like in the middle of being with someone else. Um, and kind of even better than that, it sends out a reminder to the person who's receiving the, who, who's making the appointment with me the day before. So it's just been the most amazing thing. People aren't canceling on me on these appointments. It's been great. So I highly recommend it. I think, like I say, they're a competitor to doodle. Um, they don't really do the group, um, like what's our best time scheduling, but it is good for a one-to-one. -one. Awesome. Awesome. I, I've been kind of looking because it feels like doodle. I haven't used it forever, but it seems like all the features are kind of going away. Uh, for the, for the pay model, so 
right? They're, the way they've been doing their their um, freemium kind of thing, all the stuff that they used to have in the free version that's mm. now paid, some of those things are being picked up by other apps. I think this is just an example. But the interface is very different. So like if you were to put in there, um, you've got the URL, um, if after .com you put slash C Klosky, um, you could see when I'm saying I would be available to meet. And you'll see it's like really, I was able to constrain the times, but I've also got like, here's, if you just want 15 minutes with me or a half hour or whatever, it gives those different options. Oh, nice. So, you know, it's really, it's a different approach with the same kind of underlying functions. But then in the end, this makes it very clear, like, what is it you want to do? And I get to put in all my messages there. I get to control all that. Very cool. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I don't know if you notice on my emails, I do have the Doodle link, like, hey, you want to meet with me, and you know, it'll populate the Google Calendar and everything. But I like, I like on yours how, uh, how you can say, like, you have this set up here for you guys on audio. Um, I'm trying to get back to the page where you're on. <laughs> I'm going through all the interface now, um, but I really dig how how on yours. It says 15 minutes. And you actually say, you know, this is great for checking in on something. This is great for uh, talking about a potential project. This is great for meetings, training, all kinds of other stuff. As my mm -hmm. dog, and you can have as many of those as you want. And like, there, I have them on overlapping days, right? So, like on Wednesdays, I'll allow any of those kinds of appointments. But it, I'll tell, I, ha I have it set so that I can't have more than two one-hour meetings, even at most. You know what I mean? It's really, it's really smart interface. Yeah. Oh, oh, we we have a guest down here. So sorry. Yeah, we have, we have another guest down here too. Gonzo is joining me. Can talk. <laughs> get out, Wicket. Um. No, Malenga stopping by so we can get some pizza, some that like, great slice on Broadway pizza that we have down here. And the dog won't shut up. <laughs> Cut it out. Podcasting. I'll tell you what. Um. Dogs have opinions too. Don't nope. acknowledge him or something. <laughs> um, great. Uh, so, uh, uh, so no, my awesome thing is week. Actually, I, fa you know, I, I've been saying, you know, I want to get the glasses for my Google Glass, um, and they're still like out of my price range right now. Uh, it's a stupid dog. Um, so, and there's there's a lot of really interesting ones. There's like this gl some glue function I've never heard of, and they would put magnets to the side of it and everything um mm. so i went with the zip tie model you can see there it's the geekiest thing i've seen all day that looks great yeah it looks really good <laughs> but it's super functional the only thing is i have to yeah. take, i have to make sure i have both pairs of my glasses so that um you know one will charge but uh it keeps it the, the dog will not stop i'm sorry uh but but for the most part it keeps everything in line and uh a little bit of adjustment i might maybe slip every once in a while but everything's accessible uh, i've been wear i wore this all day through yesterday and a little bit of sunday as well it works awesome um and because i got the black version you don't notice the zip ties so much you know the mm -hmm. notch is kind of a pain in the butt right here uh but i so i've been using it um a lot more uh uh than i had been because I, I was trying to use it more because i kind of just got tired of it right uh, and I wore it like all last week and just, you're, I forgot how much your nose hurts after like, you know, wedging it into your glasses. So it's in the right position and stays there and everything. Uh, so yeah, zip ties, they work awesome. <laughs> the only thing I'm missing is duct tape. That's the, oh, that was the other one they showed was uh shrink this. I don't know what the material was, but you heated it and it would shrink wrap it around the glasses in the glass. Um, but then they're like, oh, then I went and tested to make sure the Wi-Fi and everything still worked because it does get hot when, when you're doing the process. And I'm like, I, I don't think I'm going to test that on, on, on a device like this, especially as expensive as something like this was. So, um, but yeah, zip ties if you're on glass and, and, and kind of a side thing since I'm on the glass thing, there's an Explore the Stars uh, app that I, I downloaded this past week. Uh, I don't have much for pictures for it, but uh, it. It's really cool because it, it does follow your head tracking in north, you know, north, south uh, to see where you're looking in the sky. And and when you uh, uh, there's a cursor and it, when you land on a star, which mostly lines up as much as I can tell in the city from the few stars I can see from my house. Um, the, when you line up, it'll actually start giving you information about the stars and planets uh, that you're centered on. And it'll, uh, uh, you know, lay over pictures of whatever that constellation is 
like, you know, lions or, you know, people or, or whatever they may be. Uh, it, it's, it's a really cool, it, it's the coolest G Wiz thing I've seen from Google Glass since the initial uh, hidden, here's the Google team in 3D uh, uh, kind of demo. Uh, so, uh, so I, I'm getting back into it. I kind of, I, I'm kind of uh, jumping back into it because all the doom saying over like, Android Wear, and they're like, what's Glass going to do? Uh, so, you know, uh, trying to play with it a little more and see what's out for it. So, pretty cool. Um, awesome. So I think you need to you need to bling it up a little bit with some, I don't know, sequins, or it needs to be jazzled. Bedazzled. <laughs> Bedazzled. <laughs> Bedazzled. Glazzled. <laughs> yeah, glazzled, exactly. We need uh, to make that a thing at Glazzled there's, Kits. There's these stickers, like, not, like, like overlay, like, you know, vinyl sticker things that, that people put over it with like, like Dragon Ball, not Dragon, yeah, Dragon Ball characters and Street Fighter characters and stuff that have been kind of interesting. Oh, other additional thing. Uh, I was toying around because they've been getting a lot of updates. Like there's no updates for like three months at the beginning of the year. And we're getting point updates like all the time for this thing. Um, there's an experimental feature. And I remember one of the old experimental features I talked on here a, a while ago um was the wink to take a picture which let's admit that was the creepy factor right <laughs> um yeah yeah but this one's actually uh uh, uh i forget what it's called but it's really just a it's a notification kind of oh glance for notification so if i hear a little chime in the back of my head um all i have to do is actually look up at the glass where i would look for the notification when it came up and it'll actually pop up without doing the weird like head nod tick that I used to have. Nicer. Right, so, right, right. It, it's been pretty cool. Mostly works. I just activated it by accident as I was kind of moving around and got a notification. Um, but not as wonky as the, you know, wink feature where I was taking pictures all the time, just like talking to people and nodding <laughs> my head, you know. Uh, but it, it's, it, it's, it's coming along. And, and especially after seeing all this stuff with Android Wear, and I think we mentioned this on a couple of weeks ago when we talked Google I.O., I'm watching the Android glass, uh, Android, Android wear, Android watch stuff. And I'm saying, why can't my class do that stuff uh, with a lot of the notifications and everything? Um, Cause I like the hands free thing. And I, I don't think I'm going to wear something on my wrist. I, I have a Fitbit available that I could try. And I'm like, you know what? I just don't think I want something on my wrist. Like I've so ex excised this idea of having watches and stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just like how this feels more uh, futuristic or something. So. Uh, we will all be assimilated eventually. <laughs> and, but yeah, eventually this this is going to get better. And I still think by the time somebody asked me uh, when I wore this out, I think yesterday, they're like, oh, when's, that, when's everybody else getting those? I'm like, I hope soon. Seriously. Yeah. I am tired of, of waiting for everybody else. So it's not just like the weirdos that went and spend an obscene amount of money at this point. I, I, I can't believe they're still selling it for $1,500 at this time. You know, um, but I, I, I don't know. It, otherwise. I think it's at that point where you'll see in a lot of specialized cases, at least like, I'm, you know, we, we've talked about like, like doctors using it for these things, you know, for, 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 for certain things. Um, uh, industry is using it for, for information. I, I, I think that's going to be the big use for it more than just seeing people walk around with it. Um, but I think some special cases, definitely. So for the cost though, how much of the 1500, what is the, what does it cost them to make them? Uh, when they did the teardown, they think they said it was around two to $300 and this was a year ago. Wow. Well, that's a big differential. Yeah. 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 I, but you're getting a lot more for that. I was able to get these replaced. For instance, they're doing a lot more for support. They offered you wine when you picked it up, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it was a date. Open bar. Uh, kinda, kinda. <laughs> I brought a day. I brought Mad Mike. Um, <laughs> and, and there's other things they're doing too. Uh, uh, and, and even when you get it now, like I think it does come with like you get the pick. Like if I bought this now, I could get the lenses. You know, I could get the the actual prescription. Well, at least the frames. You have to go get the lenses from an actual uh, 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 optometrist. But um, but no, it's uh, you know, I think it's coming along. It's just got released in the UK. But still, like I'm, I, I want to see what happens when it does become, you know, the consumer wear and what happens with that. I think I think it will look much different than this when it is the three four hundred dollar model uh, that anybody can pick up. So, but, uh, so Katie, actually, we've been you have not been here, but you've been mm -hmm. here, kind of 
by proxy by your <laughs> by your Alpha Lab Gear uh, pre- uh, uh, interviews, and we're going to show the last mm-hmm. one. Do you want have anything you want to say going this about Life Shell? Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but today was actually Life Shell Day in Pittsburgh. I didn't know. Yeah, uh, City Council uh, p- proclaimed it this morning uh, for all their work they've done in, uh, is in regards to preventing sexual assaults in the software or the um, technology they've created to protect us and allow us to protect ourselves uh, from these situations. But yeah, uh, there's if you uh, go to the, oh, didn't, maybe I didn't pick the right link. Um, but uh, they they were downtown today and they got a proclamation and everything. It's, it's great. Uh, most of the group is from Carnegie Mellon University, most of their founders, which is really neat. But I'm um, trying to find you the actual picture. I don't know where it was. <laughs> well, we'll find, that, we'll find that for after the interview. In, me, in the meantime, check out uh, uh, Katie's talk with, uh, with some uh, people from Live Show. Hi, guys. It's Katie with Awesome Cast. And today we are at Alpha Lab Gear talking to a few new companies. Right now I'm sitting with Leah from Life Shell. Hi, Leah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. I heard you guys had a pretty exciting day yesterday. We did. We really did. We um, One of our members, Jayon Wang, our CEO, actually got to pose a question for President Barack Obama whenever he visited Tech Shop here in Pittsburgh. How cool. Were you guys nervous going into this? Um, we kind of knew what to expect. It was up in the air whether we'd get the chance to actually approach President Obama with our product and what we're all about. But um, I think Jayon handled the situation fantastically and really got our product out there and got us on his radar. That is, that is so cool and it's so exciting to have the president you know, in Pittsburgh and talking to our companies and we're such a lucky community. What, what's so special about Pittsburgh, do you think? I think Pittsburgh has a really great growing environment, whether it's through technology and the growing entrepreneurship here. I think it's really going to be a catalyst in the future for young entrepreneurs like ourselves. Um, I think the technology is great here, especially with all the colleges and all the young professionals here. And I think people are really coming back to invest in the talent that they have here. And I think that just makes it so great. There's culture, there's tradition, and I think a lot of people are really invested in what Pittsburgh has going on right now. Now, most of your company, are you guys from the Pittsburgh area? Um, Actually, none of us are from Pittsburgh originally. Mm -hmm. Um, The three founders were all CMU um, graduates and actually knew each other from freshman year of college. And I also went to Carnegie Mellon, and so has, I think, all of our team members as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're all Carnegie Mellon, born and bred. Um, But, yeah, no one from Pittsburgh originally, though. Mm -hmm. That's that's so neat. Um, one of the, the unique things about Pittsburgh, and you said the culture, is we do have our own kind of world here, and we have our own kind of melting pot of things that you can do within the city. Uh, was it a big, was it a difference coming to the city when you came to CMU? Was it um, as far as what we had to offer from where you're originally from? Or I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania, so yes, in a sense. I think some of our teammates came from different cities across the U.S., but um, it's interesting coming to Pittsburgh because there's so much to offer and at Carnegie Mellon sometimes you find yourself in your little bubble mm-hmm. but I think this year especially um, being able to explore the technology side of Pittsburgh and lots of the different neighborhoods that are really growing and thriving here has been exciting and you always figure out that there's something more going on here. As your, your founders and your CEOs, uh, what's, how did this idea come about? How did that everybody get together and think about this? I think by attending a 21st century university, you know, we're all in college and we all realize that sexual assault really is a problem and it's not going away. Yes, there's education and there's awareness in the United States right now, but there's really no active deterrent. And I think that's with some brainstorming and realization, we know that there needed to be something like that out there. And there's people and members on our teams who've had personal experience with sexual assault. And, you know, it's a very personal situation that I think is a global issue right now. Um, President Barack Obama has brought it to the forefront recently. And I think with him raising national awareness, we all realize that it's not going away and we need to be part of that solution right now. Yeah, that's one of the the cooler things I think about your company is you're taking a proactive stance to stop these things from occurring and, and to take care of an, an individual produ- protection. And I've actually I've played with your demos. It's it's it, we had another event where we had played with your demos, and they're actually something where you could use them. And I don't feel I know with Mason things I feel uncomfortable carrying this. This is obviously what I'm carrying, and I, this is clumsy, and I have to do this. But your cases are so streamlined and so not I don't want to say hidden, but almost to the point where it's not like you look like you're looking for trouble. This is something you kind of have to yourself. Um, was that an important part of the design process or something? Yeah, so definitely a lot went into the design process. We wanted something 
that in a sense could be um, recognizable. When you saw it, we always say it's similar to whenever you see an ADT sign in a yard. You want to you want people to know that you are protected. You know, so maybe they will think twice about um, sexual assault in a situation. But we also wanted something that was easy to maneuver, easy to handle, um, and something that was there right when you needed it, and something that you're not that's not too bulky and has all its capabilities right there in one. So I guess a lot was tied into the design. You know, you were thinking from the software side of things and the hardware and really trying to make it user friendly because with products like these, you really need to address a large scale population. You know, we were talking the other day, there's the military, there's runners, there's college students, there's your normal everyday human being and everybody wants to be protected so how can we cater this best to all sorts of populations and I really think that we're doing that here at Life Shell. Um, when you're working at, uh, what's your experience like working with Alpha Lab gear? What's, what have they provided for you? I think for the founders especially it's been a lot of mentorship and a lot of personal growth this year. So many opportunities whether it's through networking and just the environment here is amazing. There's so many young entrepreneurs and you know that going, for, going around from one company to another you never know um, what kind of connection you can make and what kind of advice, information the other young entrepreneurs here that they can give you. There's a lot of people who have been in our shoes before and I just think any advice that they have is valuable as we kind of move steps forward on this journey this year. Life Show is part of Demo Day. Did you notice a reaction and any sort of um, feedback from that? We've definitely had a lot of positive feedback since Demo Day and I think right now we're just really riding on the positive feedback, the connections and networking we made there and um, carrying that through especially through yesterday's meeting with President Obama. You know, that was a great opportunity for some further networking and really getting our name out there. So I think we're just really revving up for some beta testing with different folks and we've had some different focus groups. So I think we're just um, progressing towards the next step right now, which is um, we're focusing right now on our beta testing. When does that start? So we have a couple um, groups that we're going to be focusing on this fall and late summer here. So beta testing in the fall and then by summer 2015 we hope to have our first line of products out there um, to really target the incoming college class at that point. So what's next step for Life Shell? I think right now we're focusing primarily on getting our products into people's hands as soon as possible. Um, we're going to be having a Kickstarter that's actually starting at the end of the summer here um, as an opportunity to hopefully raise awareness and get some funds to help us progress to the next stage. Um, and then hopefully developing our products further, um, always focusing on keeping people safe and keeping people at the center of our focus here at Life Shell. What kind of snacks does your group enjoy? Oh, everything. <laughs> what kind of snacks don't we enjoy? <laughs> And we're back. Thanks for that, Dutters. And of course, here's the picture. We found that for you guys on video. Uh, it's actually, if you go to Life Show's Facebook page, uh, it's over on there. So it's really awesome. Them getting a proclamation. Uh, uh, th that's cool. You know, I mean, that's and that's another case of like this tech city thing happening in Pittsburgh. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there was a uh, when I went to social uh, media day last week, there was a proclamation about officially it's Pittsburgh social media day. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I know you guys see a couple things in the rundown. I have been loving Bill Peduto's Twitter feed the last few months, <laughs> hearing all the stuff coming coming on. Uh, they're opening up data. Uh, there's these parking uh, these these parking things. He's taking on uh, the PUC, which I never understood, never knew what the PUC stood for until now. Um, but for uh, uh, them outlawing uh, Uber and Lyft in the past week. Which apparently the Uber and Lyft cars are still running. Like they're just saying, no, we're going to keep going uh, until this gets well, resolved. They're just going to pay all the fines until. Oh, are they? they That's pretty much what it comes down to: is that the the companies will pay, you know, or the investors or whoever. Somebody's going to pay the fines, which is basically what they're. They, it's not like a criminal. Mm -hmm. You're not making a criminal type crime. It's some sort of a violation. And they're mm -hmm. dealing with this all over the place. I think they they had a recent uh, issue even in uh, some European countries. Uh, so, I mean, they're, they're used to this. They're used to the, having to fight city to city to city, uh, trying to get this along. Uh, but, but really great that we have, we do have a mayor that, that is kind of sticking up for these and sticking up for things actually moving forward and technologically and supporting things like this and, 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 you know, uh, things like life shell getting recognition, uh, things like that. Um, 
and I know one one thing at, uh, that they've been talking about is this big opening up big data. Uh, if you follow at PGA Data Works on Twitter, uh, they have some information like that. Um, uh, they, and one thing they're reaching out and, and uh, having data available uh, from the municipal municipality and they're actually going to some schools and letting like some of these kids interested in uh some of the analytics work uh do projects with it so uh, really kind of eye-opening stuff and 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 other initiatives like uh they're talking about gpsing a lot of the buses so you know if they're on time um uh, there was a uh, one link about uh, what what's going on with parking uh parking apps other cities are using obviously you know inspiring some stuff that they can do with a lot of this big data work um uh you know here in pittsburgh we already do have a park pgh app that only really works downtown and for like most of the garages i don't think even all the garages down there right i don't think it's all the garages i've i've tried to um set things up with it before but haven't haven't gotten maybe really embedded in it i do want i mean it's an ideal world if you could imagine saying okay here's my route and then once i get close having your your mapping app you know hand you over to your parking app and have it tell you you know here are your here's a place to park so you don't need to think about it you can pay attention to your driving and changing lanes or whatever else you're doing that's a problem because i always think about it when i'm on my way down for a lunch meeting and i'm i'm like oh no i didn't look for parking it's already too late i'm already trying to merge in the four pit tunnel right uh which is the probably the worst possible time i could be pointing poking at that thing right um but it, it's been a great it's been a great help for what it does uh but again mostly like stuff in the culture district all the main uh kind of parking situations uh but and it doesn't deal with you know the regular parking and some of the uh in the video that, that was shared earlier they're, they're talking about some of these cities i'm trying to pull up the video here uh we're paying for your parking on an app extending your parking during an app that would have been really helpful at tedx when uh there was a four hour limit to your meter and everybody had to leave halfway through the event to go refill the meter to wait for it to expire are you freaking kidding me um but and also interesting, one of these, I think it's the Chicago app. You can actually there was actually a function to bid on getting somebody's spot, which nice. somebody That's even better. <laughs> somebody is doing in San Francisco and they're actually uh, uh, under a lot of fire for it in San Francisco. But this is actually the municipal is actually setting up that people can do this. Um, so I, I, there's a lot of back and forth and it's probably going to be different uh, uh, from city to city. Uh, but this is like a really good practical use of, of some uh, city infrastructure here. So, mm -hmm. so I know one of my concerns is when I park is how much is it going to be and having to pay attention on not only to what garages are open, how much is it going to cost me? You know, mm -hmm. anywhere in downtown can be anywhere from five to 15 and so on. And it's An hour. when you're only going to be down there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. It's not worth you know, something could say, hey, by the way, you're passing a garage. It's five dollars. Pull over now. <laughs> Yeah, there's not, there's not like, like it should be on the like the restaurants. There's so many dollar signs at least by it. Mm -hmm. So he's like, this is a really expensive one. Uh, yeah, I, I just went down for lunch and ended up uh, spending more for parking than I did for lunch. Uh, you know, just because I'm like, well, this is closer. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and usually I just, it's cheaper to go up Boulevard typically. Like maybe I'll pay five bucks, maybe. Uh, so, but it's really cool to see this kind of uh, work. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as we uh, kind of get more, into this uh, and see see like what's happening from the Data Works initiative that they just announced. Uh, we'll, we'll probably talk about that more on the show because it's a really cool thing to happen right here um, that we can you know hopefully see happen before us. Well, just even having people be sort of you know focused on data as a thing is mm -hmm. awesome. You know, mm -hmm. you think of the um, the uh, five thirty eight blog, which was the blog that was at the New York Times for a while and now is broken off and I think is part of ESPN or somebody else, um, that they uh, looked at the actual numbers of polls for elections rather than just sort of people's you know, surveys and experts, quote unquote experts, opinions about what were gonna happen. And the polls and the data were, were much more accurate about predicting the, what the election results would be. And, but you know, I guess what I'm saying is if, our, if we as a public, as a society are, aware of the, all the data that's being collected on us. We can be better citizens. We can be smarter about analyzing stuff and maybe less manipulated. I don't know. It's kind of a utopia vision maybe, but it would be mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. well, and I know the biggest thing with this city is 
um, a lot of we don't know where the money goes and we're finding out all these weird places where it went over the last couple administrations probably um, mm. and and now it's like look we're going to show you where all this is going we're going to show you how your money's being used we're, we're going to respond to to these kinds of things um, even you know I think I think Cindy help me out refresh my memory I'm really fuzzy on this I think this is that social social media day where they showed like the gas main br- or not the gas the water break and PWSA oh, like, yeah. actually responded to it and went and fixed it you know um, it wasn't that they fixed it, but they were able to explain to uh, the person what was going on oh, and guess, the, yes. within the seconds, you know, and the and so someone who was feeling like, oh, my God, the city is so wasteful, mm-hmm. changed around. It's like, oh, wow, the city is so responsive, you know, and, you know, any customer, and if you think about us as citizens, customers of the government, um, any customer that you're able to turn around like that is a happy customer. Exactly, especially if some of the, P- I've had my dealings with the PWSA with some bill issues, and, and it just seems like, like they were the most backward situation as far as their processing and how they dealt with stuff. And it's like, you know, if my bank didn't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, bill pay through them, I, there wouldn't be an easy way other than me writing a check every month. Right. Um, but to see that they are getting on board with something like this technologically is, is awesome. Um, it, it's really cool to see that that movement happening. So, uh, you know, going keep on the piss. This is really Pittsburgh centric today. I know we've we got a live show. We got we got all this uh, big data stuff. But I wanted to draw some attention to an article actually from Pittsburgh magazine that a friend of all of ours, uh, Pit Girl Ginny, uh, is uh, from that's church dot com uh, is her blog. But she does a monthly article over there on Pittsburgh magazine. And she did a really awesome article on uh, Pittsburgh then and now through Street View. And some of these neighborhoods, I know I did, I hadn't been to some of these neighborhoods before, you know, last few years. Like I know this Garfield area that they're showing here. Um, it, it's really cool to kind of see see that 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 transformation. And I think these mostly are going back to 2007. Mm-hmm. And also I've seen her tweet uh, her new pastime is trying to find uh, the Google streetcar and reflections on Street View. So. <laughs> that's cool the one thing about that article that it was it's kind of bittersweet because it does show a lot of these um communities that are experiencing blight but then you look at how they are now and they look really pretty mm-hmm. but for example that green building that you were showing the condos that are there there's i don't know what there's a couple dozen condos there start at you know 200 some thousand dollars and that for garfield is really expensive and mm-hmm. so it kind of is also pointing out some of what depending on your point of view some people will see as gentrification and kicking out different communities so it's kind of it could be even more an even richer set of information for for us to look at you know as pittsburgh people think about what it is that we want to see in the future and should everything be really shiny or are we allowed to have a little grit too Mm -hmm. excuse me a lot of dramatic changes there so a really interesting article there no it's not time for the movie minute um awesome so, uh, uh, Cindy, I know you pointed one out that you wanted to look at today. Well, we're um, so fireworks, Fourth of July, very exciting time for um, everyone who uh, is a, a pyromaniac, um, and for those of us again, sort of in the Pennsylvania area, we're big on our fireworks. The video that I saw going around a lot, um, I, and I think it wasn't actually filmed on the Fourth of July this year; it may have been filmed earlier. Was one of a um, someone put a, a drone with a camera on it and flew it through. Um, through some fireworks, and a lot of people were very excited, uh, very pleased by it. I had some questions about the video itself because they, it's the, um, at one point they have it go backwards, and it's, you know, I don't think it's the really the best edited video in the world, but it is, I saw it sort of a proof of concept. What would it look like if you, you know, fireworks are going off around you? It is pretty cool. So I, that was interesting. You know, it's had millions of views. Um, and among the people who have viewed it, well, did, so this is the first time you're seeing it? Yes, it is. Um, it's a little choppy for you guys on our video feed, but it looks really awesome in person. So definitely look this up. So my thought when I you know, first heard about this was, um, wow, wasn't the person afraid of their drone, inexpensive drone toy being blown up? <laughs> 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 Apparently they were not that worried. Um, but the other people who have had some questions about this have been the FAA. <laughs> yes. You know, wondering, what are you doing flying drones at night? how close were you to an airport you're only you have to be with you no know, closer than i think five miles or something so so as cool as this video was um you know this person 
and there have been a, only a handful of them. And I think part of it is because it, um, the FAA is maybe not going to be excited about this. So mm -hmm. developing, I think, is what we want to say. It is. And, <laughs> and we had a little bit of that conversation or uh, talk with identified technology, because uh, one of the things is uh, you're not really allowed to, in a lot of cases, use drones for 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 business use you know, above certain heights and uh, altitudes and, and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. Definitely, this. Uh, I'm sure at that height, it, it probably meets FAA <laughs> requirements. At that point, um, I mean, even to the point where the, one of the uh, somebody was using one to chase storms uh, for oh, wow, really? local for local weather, and they mm -hmm. got fined because they're like, you can't mm -hmm. do that yet. Why? Because we don't have any rules yet. Like that's the reason. Um, and they're supposed to have the rules. Uh, uh, they're, they've been they've been called by i think congress to actually have the role set by uh, uh near the end of next year in 2015 so it's an unfortunate that we have to wait and i know you know companies like identified technology people that want to do cool stuff like this um are just kind of like okay let us use our toys come on guys well okay but you know if i am out you know riding in a small plane mm -hmm. i don't want some you know bird strike is bad enough i don't want to be hit <laughs> by some some kids you know toy plane that he, and the thing is it's not as though these things are so wickedly reliable you know mm -hmm. you it can get uh, the things can falter it, and you can lose sight of it and then also you can lose control of it and mm -hmm. you have to count on it being able to do its homing thing what if it's doing its homing thing and you're you know flying by I don't know. I mean, I think there's a reason why sometimes, you know, we as a, you know, we want there to be some rules. What if <laughs> what if you're what if, <laughs> what if you're 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 in your plane or whatever, and you get hit by an Amazon drone uh, carrying a giant box of uh, toilet paper? You know, you never know. <laughs> you just don't know what I heard. <laughs> it would look amazing. Did you see that? There's a, someone posted a thing of a moose um, hit a car, or a car hit a moose, a moose in okay. the car had an unhappy moment um and the moose is probably bigger than the car you know what i mean so there's no mooses on the drone sorry that's a side side thing but that's I, I just was suddenly reminded of it that's fine all moose. uh what is this about the phantom drone i'm seeing in the notes Oh, well, that was someone who um, uh, was flying some skies and actually was kind of talking about some of these things we're saying about y you can lose sight of your, you know, your things, kind of giving a, a really, I thought, very thoughtful overview of all the things that, um, that it, with the experience of doing it, the way that people react to you. I, he has a little anecdote at the beginning where he's out flying his drone and a father and son come up and the father says, how much did it cost? And the kid says, does it have a gun <laughs> or something like that? Like whoa! What do we? What do? What do people think of these things? Awesome, yeah. I, I mean, I know uh, a, a mutual friend of ours has uh, had a drone and says that he's lost it in the in the in the river, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I think he's on his second one. I, I think he's still on his second one. So I haven't checked in with him for a while on that. Uh, but I don't know. It's exciting because you know, seeing seeing the kind of tech like you know, like like some of these companies are doing. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities with these guys, and there's a lot of weird weird stuff. Like the uh, one one show I was listening to was like, you know, what if I'm you know up in my uh, apartment, second floor, house, whatever, and then a drone just pops up with a camera, you know, a, a, and do I have a right to like you know shoot it, for instance, um, <laughs> was one of the questions. So uh, it, it's it's fun and exciting. I'm, I'm glad to see that it's pushing the envelope. And these things are getting, you know, they're definitely not inexpensive. But they're affordable enough that people can get these and maybe not worry if they lost it to fireworks. You know, how did that thing not get hit? In that video? I, I, need to, I need to watch he, the rest he, flies of it. It, he flies it like above the fireworks for a lot of it. So okay. I don't know that he was like inside the whole time. I wonder if he. But yeah, I mean, think about that. I just saw this movie and I couldn't. And it was like a um, small production movie, a movie called Tiny about tiny houses. Um, and it's the guy that's so like funded by. Um, crowdsourcing uh i couldn't figure out how they were getting these aerial shots at the end and now uh, it's so obvious now to me that it was a, just a drone shot and it was so great it really worked out well and they didn't have to hire you know fancy camera or anything it just really worked so you know there was um every time i watch an older film now and i watch like that overshot like like you usually see of like new york city or something or or like one specifically a, a statue of liberty i think uh, and, and realizing like how much more they had to do then to get a shot like that, yeah. you know, like it watch something from like the early eighties with a flyover and, and you can see the bumpiness, like they're not even able to smooth that out. 
because the technology is not there yet. They, they just can't do it at that point. Um, versus now, it's like, yeah, just send a drone and, you know, we'll go get a nice shot of like Niagara Falls. Ah, we lost a thousand dollar drone. That's nothing for a movie budget. Right. Um, so it, it, it's it's kind of cool. It also opens it up for lower end filmmakers, too. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, wow, well, I could get a crane shot or I could get a drone swoop in shot, you know. Um, I, I think I think it's really cool the options you can get out of that. Best so. drone swooping shot goes to <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Miami goes to exactly exactly. Um, so another some more positive news. Uh, Reading Rainbow will come to Android after closing the Kickstarter at over five point four million dollars. I think I got five bucks bucks in on that, uh, but. That is an amazing amount of money. Crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think on top of that, I think it was Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, he uh, he donated an additional million dollars, uh, matching like I think it was like so much over four million or something like that. Uh, that you probably is, found that as couch cushions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, he's producing everything. That's like that's Cosmos money right there. Right. Um, oh yeah. But uh, but but fantastic. That you know. I, it really kind of, I think it, there, I think there's a nexus to happen with this one. They're like, you either remember reading Rainbow or you remember Star Trek The Next Generation <laughs> or, right. or a combination and it just kind of exploded and snowballed from there. Like it had like the right amount of star power and it's like, yeah, I can get, yeah, kids need to read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, it, it, it's perfect. It, it, it's great to see this going and I guess they're going to provide it for free uh to to many classrooms and i think like i i'm presuming like the app like like the rest of us get to purchase the app or something like that uh but it's really cool to see this because i think i think lavar burton actually he took over the rights to the series uh, a few years ago and that's why it's been kind of kept going and kept going uh but um and and, and i don't know if you guys watched the video uh, that accompanied this, accompanied this when it uh, first launched. Uh, but but he really attributed the Kickstarter to, like, this is how we funded Reading Rainbow before, funded by people like you, you know, and here's Kickstarter. On the other hand, this, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, uh, no, finish your thought. Finish no, no, your no, thought. no, 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 no. I'm going in a different direction. I want to hear your thought first. Oh, okay. Well, I, um, uh, sort of this, this, these online videos and online education and, and just people teaching things online is um, amazing. And it's not just, it's not all makeup and hairstyles and things. I like the Vlog Brothers, um, their crash course videos. And, I, you know, they have history, they have literature, and I've, I've read a lot of the literature, and there's no reason for me to watch these videos <laughs> other than I just, they uh, they get your brain working, you know. And so if, if you know, some middle-aged lady is watching videos about, uh, you know, Shakespeare, um, and kids are watching videos about Shakespeare, and everybody's getting something out of it, you know, those are, those, these are just cool ideas, and they could not be funded, they would not be funded by the traditional media. It's really only going to be these kind of grassroots things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Please you ever watch those? I'm sorry. Have you ever sorry, seen them? It? Have you ever seen the Crash Course? They're really well made. No, Very entertaining. No, I haven't. Check those out. Are you I'll, saying- I'll post. I'll give you a link to to them. Awesome. What are you saying, Dutters? I say, please tell me your other direction is the potato salad. Yes, it is. You knew it. <laughs> you knew it. So I, I actually, okay, Kickstarter campaign for potato salad tops five thousand dollars. No, there are forty four thousand dollars. Is it more? Okay. It's forty four thousand five hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars. And if you read their pledge, like you know, there's certain pledge levels whenever you donate to a Kickstarter, and most of his pledge levels starting at like ten dollars, you get a bite of the potato salad that he's baking. You could be <laughs> in the kitchen with him while he makes potato salad, and two hundred and fifty people donated at that level. It's unreal. <laughs> That's amazing. It wasn't the goal was ten dollars to make the yes. potato salad. Now yes. he has to fulfill all of these promises, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. With your help, you'll be on your way. So we had thirteen thousand <laughs> the dollar. Uh, uh, Seven hundred ninety-five people will receive a photo of me making the potato salad. A thank you posted <laughs> on our website, and I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad. He has a lot of I names to say. I will say your name out loud. That's, wow, that is awesome. Three dollars. Seven hundred fourteen backers will receive a bite of the potato salad and the, and the rest of the stuff. The deluxe <laughs> package for three hundred ninety-three people is choose a potato salad appropriate ingredient to add to the potato salad <laughs> and the rest <laughs> of the stuff. Wow. 
Wow. So, How many batches do you think it will be? Well, he can make it. Is you know for that much? I think he can make it. Um, for seventy five thousand. <laughs> 75 backers at $50 will receive a recipe book with potato salad recipes inspired by each country where we have a backer along with a bite of the potato salad and the rest of the stuff. <laughs> at least there are. Well, in- what I love about this was he had to keep making up things as he went. I mean, he didn't. I mean, he had to kind of. Kind of I thought he was very clever in how a lot of people are hating on it, but I think it's actually he pretty still, cool. He thought of all of these things. He still has 24 days to go. That's crazy. Like this is, this is his name is Zach Danger Brown from Columbus, Ohio. By the way, so let's go visit him. Could you <laughs> well, get him? On? Did you see the risks and challenges? It is. It, he states it might not be that good. It's my first potato salad. <laughs> 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 At least he's on this. <laughs> oh, That's wow. Good. Wow. Uh, so, I yeah, a lot of people hate on this one. I, I think it's inventive. You know, first you hear is like, you hear this guy made like four grand saying he's going to make potato salad on, on Kickstarter. Like, I'm trying to think, it's like, man, maybe I can, like, can I kickstart changing the oil in my car or something? Like, like what, what, what can we do with this? You know? <laughs> but, wow. All the potato that's fit. So he's, yeah, he's got a salary for a year. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> He still has to fulfill the he's gotta still buy some potatoes. And apparently I, and apparently publish a recipe book at this point. Right. That's so, true. As you become a writer, I wanted to make potato salad on the on the Kickstarter, obviously. <laughs> so uh so we a lot of wearables. I'm wearing one of them. Get the Fitbits, we got all that kind of stuff. Um I, I found this one over this past week that looked kind of interesting. It's called Pavlock. And it's a habit-forming wearable. Uh, they say that will shock you, but it's more. I think it's more like a vibrate. Uh, so you wear this guy. No, it will vibrate, and it also will shock. Oh, the shock! It does have a shock. <laughs> uh, it will, it's, like if you don't wake up, it'll vib- You know, it vibrates to wake you up, and then if you don't wake up within a certain amount of time, then it delivers a little shock. <laughs> That's awesome. So it is. It, so it's not only negative reinforcement, but it, it is like they, they said there's some some financial <laughs> positive reinforcement with this as well. Um, incredible. I have nothing. Yeah, else. I mean, so, yeah. so psychi- psychologists kind of talk about, like, is this the right kind of motivation or not? Um, I, I think it's sort of amazing that someone would think that that's really going to be the thing that changes their life. Is, is it, develop, de- you know, delivering a little shock? Getting a little shock on your wrist is going to make you change your ways. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I think a person really needs to cha- make a real big habit of something that's important, you know, like stopping smoking or something, mm-hmm. that, that, that it's not going to be able to help them that much with it. Unless, I guess what it is, you're supposed to pair with like a friend. If your friend sees you smoking, that's when your friend gets to shock you. Ooh. And so that seems like that's, Ooh. you know, you have, have to have the right friend. <laughs> Um, I like this. Uh, this is one of the lines that when I first read this, uh, I remember sticking out. Uh, he cites research at Duke University for this that claims that 40% of our day is occupied by habits rather than conscious decisions. I believe that. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I know a lot of stuff, a lot of the work I do with the, the lifestyle medicine stuff um, is a lot of changing your habits rather than, you know, I'm going to go on a diet. It's like, no, I'm going to learn how to eat better, you know, so, you know. Those kinds of life or, changes. Right. Or the just like one small change a day. Like exactly. all I'm going to try and do is just get up in the morning. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. That's kind of my new podcasting is just so I make sure I don't hit snooze too many times in the morning because I need something to do, you know, every morning. And, and, and that's what that is. And that's a thing maybe I'll talk about some other time. Um, all the, this guy needed was a 3D printer, a Bluetooth LE chip, and they presume a battery to test his habit forming theory. There you go. I, I think that's great. It, and it sounds like it does a little bit more than one thing versus a Fitbit, but it does like my sleep and my steps. And that seems about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that's cool. I, I hope this kind of uh, uh, it becomes a big thing. And it, right now it's just an early short run prototype of production models will be much cheaper than the $250 uh, that they're saying it is in this article. So look for that soon. There's a lot of them. You ever, you ever have you been to like we were at a Target and we saw like the wall of mini wall of wearables. You know, it was like Fitbit, Pebble Watch. Okay, uh, but 
I had I had recommended one, or I sent you a link to one um, a week or two ago that where it helps you with. And I'm, as I'm as I'm slouching over here, I'm realizing yes, it, it, um, uh, it's like a pin that you wear on your lapel or, or area, and it can tell if you're slouching, and it will not not give you a shock, <laughs> but but just vibrate a little to tell you to sit up straight. I can't. I can't remember if we talked about that on the show or not. But yeah, I remember that because I was. I was looking for something like that, right? Um, or we're looking for other wearables. There was that one, and there was this one that was like a full undershirt that that oh, really? that did like <laughs> that took even more of your specs. I think Missy sent me that one too. I'm gonna have to find those and retweet them. I'm sure they're over on the Twitter stream over at awesome at awesome cast. It's definitely interesting uh, to see. Now that we're kind of past that first phase of your Fitbits and your your pedometers, pedometers, am I saying that right? I think it's pedometers. Um, right. We're we're past that step, right? And now it's like, okay, what can we add to this? What other habits can we help? You know, I, I like the idea of the posture one. I know mine sucks. You can probably see through half of the videos that I do on Tuesday nights, especially towards the end when I'm like this on the mic. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, no, I, I I love those ideas of those that assistive technology um, and the 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 quantitative quantitative self you know we've been talking about and you know getting that data and getting even more data that we can find out what our bodies are doing and how that responds to stuff. So awesome. Uh, well, so but so are you using a Fitbit? Because they did mention in that article people get these things and they use them for a little while mm -hmm. and then they sort of abandon them, and you wonder particularly if it's going to be shocking you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting that thing on. <laughs> well, I'm I'm actually using the Fitbit app because I, I have the, the iPhone 5S, so it has that chip in it that will do the steps without running down the battery. Um, I've just been using that. Uh, you know, I don't get the sleep patterns and all that extra kind of stuff. And, I you know, I can't I don't have my phone in my pocket when I'm playing softball, for instance. So I kind of have a big gap there. But I'm using it enough to kind of get an idea and being a little it's helping be a little more conscious of what I'm eating, what I'm doing with my body, you know, and got me, you know, walking. It's like, no, oh, you know, it, it's got me, it's done the habit thing, you know? And I guess at a certain point, any ideas that they let everybody do it on the app, you know, it's like, Oh, I should get that sleep stuff too. Cause I, that's, that's blank every time I look at this. Right. Um, but, but for me, it's, it's just enough to get me started again, changing those habits little by little, you know, mm -hmm. maybe at some point when I decide I need something that shocks me for the thing that's really bugging me, you know? Um, Maybe we'll jump in that. So awesome. Or for a dare. Or for, yeah, a, dare. for a dare. <laughs> you know, we've had enough experimentation with a uh, little back massage shocker thing that we, yeah, we're not getting into that. Um, <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> I feel so bad that we, we, uh, we, we passed by your app of the, app of the week here. Oh, no worries. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, this week I have a uh, tiny planet. I don't know if you've ever checked this out. It's, it's not quite super new, but um, what it is is essentially creates tiny planets out of your photos, which to me, not that I ever get sick of the skyline or the views of Pittsburgh, but you're always looking for something different to make them look different. Like, I don't know if you can see this on my phone. Oh, you can't. Darn it. Oh, wait, here, right here, try it again. Okay. Hold on. But uh, maybe not. Hold there you go. There oh. you go. I'll bring it in. Oh, it's... This is fun. You just need your cam to adjust. Oh, really? This yeah. is fancy. Yeah, we can see that. Nice. Oh, you can? Okay. Um, that's from Mount Washington. Uh, really? You could do either a rabbit hole. This is the rabbit hole version or the tiny planet version. Um, you, so you could do a couple different views. Um, this is Cedar Point. And there's a, like the one coaster. big roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of a neat and different perspective of things. And you could turn any photo into it. And it's 99 cents in the App Store. And I just thought it was pretty cool. And just, like I said, a different perspective, especially, you know, we love the views of PNC Park. We love the views from Mount Washington and just kind of giving it a different spin on things. And I have a friend in Baltimore who actually constantly posts pictures on Instagram of shots that he's taken down there. And even in DC with the cherry blossoms, just mm. it, it, like a different perspective is really, it's really cool. I think it's just a fun app to play with. Downloading now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So go check that out. It's Tiny Planet Photos. It's on the, uh, just the iPhone app store, it looks like. And yeah. What was right this? You, you bricked your phone? Yes, I did. I bricked it. Um, I've been, I had been putting off the update for, uh, whatever, a month or so now, and I decided to finally do it. And it bricked during the update. Uh, so that was exciting. My first iPhone, my first iPhone brick. <laughs> wow. And 
the the problem for me is I, I don't with my laptop the operating system isn't new enough to go into iTunes and to restore it from my own iTunes so I had to borrow somebody else's laptop to get it to, to restore uh, I actually had talked to Chilla about it um, when this had happened and he suggested using there's it's called tiny umbrella is a, a way to restore your previous OS hmm. was another option if uh, I couldn't get it through my iTunes. Yeah, you were away, Sorg, and I had to call everybody else. Please help. So I, I was iPhoneless for a solid day and a half, two days. I'm one of my first tiny planners of the studio. Gonzo is sticking out really interesting off the side of it. So <laughs> and check that out. Awesome. <laughs> so you see, you'll turn everything into a tiny planet. I, I made a uh, pictures of myself but just weird looking <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome um so anything else coming up that uh you guys uh saw interesting in the news this week before we head out of here uh not in the news but something for you sorg oh. uh there is a, a a new at the scare house new basement day coming up here july oh, 19th no. yeah hooded in the basement hooded in the basement yeah oh, i mean no. I, I don't I'm not sure, you know, I don't know the exact concept of exactly what everything's going on, but I know the actors involved. And a lot of times with the basement, it is a different group every time. It's not necessarily the same actors that you see all the time down there. And the group that's already, that I've talked to that is going to be there, wow, they're going to torture you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only, it's it's $20 to do, and it's on July 19th. And it's it's a one-day thing, and it'll be totally different than anything else you've experienced in the scare oh, house. And, and I love the fact that we're doing something different every so often to kind of, uh, change things up and give you a different experience every time. <laughs> yeah, this is the second time you guys have had like an out of season uh, basement event, right? Third, third time third we did time. Uh, Christmas, Christmas and Valentine's Day. Wow, I went through on Valentine's Day. I did not make the Christmas one, but it's 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 pretty insane. It's it's a totally different experience. If you're used to the regular mm -hmm. scare house, it's a totally different experience. Yeah, and I think we talked about it on here before, but yeah, this is like you know your hind house except they can touch you and stuff you know yes. where a lot of the rules like like i think i saw the sheet like you you will have to crawl somewhere somebody actually we were um on a trip to a show uh and one of the guys actually had gone through and he, he kind of described the situ like the experience <laughs> and like about how he got shoved in a closet his friend got shoved in a closet with some guy in his underwear while all this other <laughs> stuff happened to him so you don't even get the same experience going through it Mm -hmm. um so it's 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 pretty interesting and, and and it looks like it's always changing this is like this is like some this is a great experiment it seems that they've been they've been doing out there that's great to see. oh goodness yes so awesome so on that line uh i don't think there's any big events coming up uh mm -hmm. we kind of like blew through them all oh hey uh build guild if you're catching this in time uh build guild pittsburgh i know is meeting wednesday night down at lot 17 uh, over in Bloomfield. Yeah, that's Bloomfield uh, in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, a really cool uh, social thing. Uh, a lot of coders, web design guys uh, hanging out there. So uh, always fun to do that. Also, there's some events uh, that I know I've been tweeting out. Uh, the hardware store is having a, a I think it's like a, I don't have it in front of me, but it's a, I think it's like a psychology and social media uh, kind of presentation. I think it's $20 at the door. Uh, if you look up the hardware store in Allentown, Pittsburgh uh, on meetup.com, uh, they're at Crowdosaurus, I believe, is their Twitter handle. Uh, so uh, shout out to them. Go check that out. I think if all works out, I'll be hanging out uh, there next Thursday. I keep missing their events because they're always like Tuesday nights or Saturdays when I have a wrestling show. So, uh, But definitely want to support them. They're doing some rejuvenation stuff up there in Allentown, up on Warrington Avenue. So um, always want to support that kind of stuff. Um, and I, eventually I will send my first tiny plan here that I've got on Instagram. I'm trying to <laughs> get everybody's uh, ads in here. So... Um, with that, uh, uh, Cindy, uh, where can people find stuff out? You've been blogging lately. Anything coming up? I um, have. I will be posting a blog post soon. <laughs> oh, I've been horrible <laughs> I've been, about I've been it. Suffering through my blog, but my poor blog so is bad. so neglected. You know but what? I, once it's back up, bigbakedesign.com and um, mybrilliantmistakes.com. I kind of cheated because I found myself. I just wrote up something really quick after we did a Google Hangout last Monday, and I just mm -hmm. like, you know what? This would be a blog. You know what? I can embed this in my blog and just left it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice that's cheat. All right. That's a blog post right there. It Absolutely. counts. It counts. Probably not greatly SEO'd, but it, it counts, right? Um, sure. Awesome. And uh, Dutters, where can people find stuff for you? Um, at Kate Dutters on Twitter. I'm Kate Marie PGH on the Instagrams. 
And uh, let's see. Oh, it's Toilet Tuesday. New porta potty pick. I actually went camping this past weekend. So it'll be an outhouse for you. <laughs> Nice. So very exciting. <laughs> nice. I can't wait to see the gathering porta potties you find in a oh few weeks gosh. here. It's going to be incredible. Um, <laughs> that'll be a whole other experience. But, anyways, uh, and of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters, sorgatron.com if you want to see my new blog I finally put up. Um, yay! Yay! And I just tweeted <laughs> out the tiny plan if you guys want to go check that out uh, on uh, at Sorgatron. Uh, also, you can find us here every Tuesday, recorded live at uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, tweet us at AwesomeCast. Find us on Google Plus and the Facebook. And uh, you can ho- drop us a line at AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. Check us out on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker. And I think that's all in audio and video formats. Uh, and please like us, comment us, share it with your friends if you're digging this. Um, if, if you're digging the conversation, want to get in on the conversation, we highly, highly encourage that uh, to, to spread the word on what's going on here. Uh, thanks to uh, our guests tonight, uh, our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Hey,